one end or the other, and then you'll be really successful. The more convenient you can make it, the more successful you're going to be. The more about the high fidelity experience you can make it, the more successful you're going to be. But if you try to get in that middle where it's kind of jumbled, it's not a trade-off for anybody because they get something and they go, well, it's not really as convenient as I want it to be, so I'm going to get something more convenient. Or it's not really as high fidelity as I want it to be, so I'll go to make the trade-off and go up to the high fidelity. So a lot of organizations or a lot of companies when they build products actually build their products in the middle and then they really aren't products that satisfy anybody. So uh, his contention is you either push your products to the high convenience and do a lot of cuts and take things away and people are willing to take that because it's a convenient product or you make it really high fidelity. And then he's got some great examples in the book. But when I was looking at that, I thought, you know, that fits really well with user communities because if you look at your user community, you think about how to market that, you need to think of it in two ways, or not the user community, but communities. Um, you've got one group of people that's about the fidelity, the experience. So they just want to belong. So that's one part of the community. It's like two products that you have to service in your community. So it's not like just one group of people. You have one group of people that's really small, but they are, like um, he was saying earlier, they're very influential and can determine a lot of the success of your community, uh, but they're a really small group. But what they need is different than that 95% group that really is more like the, com the convenience side, and they're there for the practical help. So you've got two kind of products in your community. You've got one product, which is going to be all about belonging, and the other part is all about um, the practical help and you know, giving the quick tips and let me get out of there kind of thing. So that's kind of what you want to think about. So it's a community experience for the people who really will drive your community. And for the other one, it's the help. So whatever your community is based on, then you need to think about what are the needs of those types of groups. So how do we build that high fidelity experience for the people who really, those MVP type of people who will drive through the engine for your community? Just like I was saying, you know, take 50,000 people, you really have, in the Articulate user community, you probably have about 20 people that drive almost all that activity in there and answer all the questions and, and do all the gags and all the, I think on Friday they take our photos and Photoshop them and make all these goofy photos and stuff out of that. But it's a whole, you know, it's kind of a fun thing that they do, but you've got this 5% this of that small group of people that really drive all the activity, they're answering all the questions. And they create that atmosphere of what the community is when you get in there. And then you've got the 95, they just, you know, on the RT side, they're looking for technical help or some, you know, questions about building a course. They just want to go in. They don't want to chit chat. They don't want to Photoshop photos of the RT staff. They don't want to talk about their experiences in the industry, any of that stuff, right? They just want, here's what's the quick tip I can get and let me get back to work. And so you've got two types of products in your community. So you've got to figure out, you know, those the people who are there who want to belong. I kind of call them the social entrepreneurs. They're, there's just something about them that's innate to their character that they just love to kind of be in that community environment. And you can't, I don't think you can really manufacture it. It's just part of the way they are. And so they gravitate. And they're their MVP type people. And the other side, you've got that group of people who just want whatever the community's got to give them. They want that. So you've got to see your community as two products, and then how do you, strategically, you work with those two products in, in two different ways. So think of it like this. So on one side, the iPhone, this was, I need to change this because the iPhone is no longer a status symbol. They sell it at Walmart for $147. But the, um, you know, when the, Walmart, when the iPhone first came out, I had a friend of mine, he was, he was working on his uh, master's at Pepperdine, and all the professors have gotten iPhones. And he said they just walk around with their iPhones, right? They weren't even using the iPhones, they just like walk around, like, I got an iPhone. I'm sure they were doing that when the, top, I, the iPads came out too, but you know, there's this, there was that status thing, right, when the, iPad, when the iPhone first came out, the people who had the iPhone, it was hard to get, they were expensive, and you'd walk around with that, and then now, you know, now you can just, they're just comments. But when they were that status thing, I look at, because I'm a cheap disposable phone type of person, so I hardly use my cell phone. I, I buy like a thousand minutes a year, and at the end of the year, I sell like 800 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Don, Don can vouch for that. So I have the, the 
the cheapest phone, actually I upgraded a little to a slightly better cheap phone. But the, um, uh, to me it's just about, you know, I don't care about the status part of it, I don't care about it, it needs to just do what I want it to do, right, which was make phone calls, which it didn't do because when you have a cheap phone, you don't, <laughs> you don't get connections. Which was great, because you know, I didn't need really to worry about people bothering me. But the, uh, but the thing is, I made trade-offs when I bought the phone, I'm not expecting, I'm not going to walk around with my little Samsung phone showing it off to anybody, right? But I know that, so it's, it's I made a trade-off. To me, it's just about the utility, I don't care. But if I wanted a status thing, I would be, look, what's the hottest thing? What's the thing that's going to make me seem important in the cell phone world? And that's what I would get, right? And so it's the same thing about everything. You know, the high fidelity is like, uh, in the book he talks about people who go to like a U2 concert. You know, they're not going to the concert and paying 100 bucks a ticket or whatever the tickets cost. 160. It's 160. <laughs> so if you don't, you don't go to U2's concert to listen to the music, right? Because you could just buy a CD or some MP3s. But you go there for that experience. There's the high fidelity experience. It, it's something you just can't get listening to the music on, on, on your iPod or whatever. So um, the technology you have is a structure. The community is very organic. So it's that connection that people have and learning. So what you need to do is kind of figure out how to facilitate that. I kind of see when you manage a community, you have two key roles in there. So one role is the curator, and the other role is the connector. So that could be the same person if you're the community manager and you're trying to create a community. The curator, you know, we talk about kind of developing a strategy to work with those two products. The curator is that person who collects stuff that's going to be valuable to the 95%. So the 95% that come to your community who don't want to, you know, you talk about how do I get them to be part of the community? Well, they're not going to be part of the community, but there's something in that community they might need. So you've got to figure out how do you get that to them. So you've got to figure out what, it, what their needs are, and then what can you do to make it as easy as possible. Because what happens is the fact that they come in there and get information, that is your community, right? They're just not active in the community. So to keep them coming in there, you've got to figure out what their real needs are, and then you're the curator to help do that. Kind of like what I was doing at the other company. We had all these Articulate users. Well, I knew they weren't going to go to the Articulate website to collect information. And I kind of knew what type of work they were doing. So I, I knew generally kind of what needs they had. So I went to the Articulate community and I would curate the tips and tricks and the help that I found there that I thought that would be valuable to those users. And so then I brought them into our own shared practice site, and then they had access to them. So I kind of played the role of curator. Now, curator, if you start following the social media stuff, now it's like a big buzz thing. Everybody, the two big buzzwords that you need to get down for 2012 are going to be curation and gamification. So you get those two words. If you start using, if you go to work now and you start telling them about how you need to gamify your training, you're all going to think you're cutting edge. And then next year, when they're at the ASTD conferences, and they all come back saying, you were talking about gamification before? <laughs> so the curation is the same thing now, and then gamification. Storyline, or not, uh, what's it, Second Life? Eh, you know, anybody talking about Second Life anymore? Okay, so, uh, but you got the curator, the person who's collecting information, and you've got to figure out how to get that to that 95% group. And then the connector is the person, how you connect those people who really love to be in that community and share and interact. And it's funny because Jerry, who's one of the Articulate MVPs, you know, I'm sitting there on Saturday looking something up, and I posted some. I saw somebody ask a question, so I answered it. And Jerry's in there. It's like, man, what are you doing Saturday in the Articulate community? Don't you have a life? Yeah, but yeah, that is his life. He just loves it. If anybody's been in the Articulate community, you've met Jerry. He just loves it. He doesn't work for us. I've had people, he's in Minneapolis, he works for 3M. I've had people in Minneapolis email me and say, you know what, Jerry, we had some questions and Jerry went over to our company to answer it. You know? What is that, right? That you've got this guy just loves that community. It's, he really feels like he's long, but he's really 
kind of connected to those people. So um, you get that in all user communities where people are just very passionate about that particular thing. And so they kind of connect. So you've got to, for them, you've got to figure out what are the mechanisms to connect them to a So on the Articulate side, what we did was we realized that um, the people don't really, people don't really care about Articulate, right? What they care about is getting the jobs done, and Articulate's a solution to doing that. So one of the key things for us in the community is understanding that. There's that element of humility. So the tendency is let's build a community. We're going to be the stars of the community. We're going to do all this stuff, and why don't we come, become part of the community? And you've got to learn that you know, it's not about that. It's that most people don't care about any of that stuff. So on the Articulate side, for us to step back and say, people don't care about the software. They bought the software to get their jobs done. So what can we do to help them get their jobs done? So it's not about Articulate as much as it is about the people in the community. So whatever community that you're working on, it's not about you and what you're doing in the community, it's what are the needs of the people in that community, because that's what's gonna make the community work. I won't go through these examples, these are just some examples. Yes? I'm curious, from, a, uh, from an internal marketing point of view, you, know, you, could, uh, you could say, you know, we're a uh, software company, but you could say maybe we're a community building company that happens to sell software. I'm curious right. about what the conversation you have about that. Well, we kind of, I mean, we do, for us, we have what we call the three C's. The, i got to remember them now. Community, <laughs> uh, content, and cadet. Because we could come up with the third C. <laughs> but the uh, community is like a one third of our focus in what we do. Because we do see that. We say, you know, like I said, if you buy our software, we're all about helping you get the most value out of it. So really, we're committed to you building courses and doing that, and, and buying the software is just part of that process. Really, just a small part of it. We're really committed to you getting the most value out of out of that. But you know, a lot of companies don't do it. It's su surprising because the, the, there are some great companies out there that do a great job on community stuff. Then there are a lot of companies out there. You just wonder, are you not living? in this century because you're completely missing the opportunity to work with the people uh, that are using your products. So what you've got to do is figure out what the fruit is of your community. You know, when you think of a potted plant or a tree or whatever, you plant something, I guess a potted plant isn't necessarily a fruit, but let's say you've planted a tomato plant, right? The fruit that comes from that, the tomato, it looks nice and stuff, but that's not what grew the fruit, right? You're doing all this stuff with the soil and, and the nutrients and all the things that go, I'm not a gardener by the way, so all the stuff that goes into actually growing tomatoes, the fruit though is the byproduct of all of that, right? So a lot of times we look at the numbers or we look at all these things are kind of the fruit of the community and we want to measure that, but I think you're better off trying to figure out what to measure in terms of what you're doing to produce the fruit. So kind of focus on that and not necessarily on the numbers. So you got to figure out what you're measuring, what makes your community successful.